Philip, it is such a broad issue. It's not just about this one phone. People are saying it's going to end up at the Supreme Court. What are the arguments going to be? Well, essentially, Apple is saying, look, you know, this is something that no court can order us to do. They've gone too far. There's no statute on the books anywhere that can give a court plenary power to order a company or an individual to do something to, in this case, make something out of whole cloth that does not exist. On the other hand, the FBI says, wait a minute, this law is on the books for a reason, and it, it gives courts ancillary authority to make orders and to, pa and to pass um, judgments and, and order people to do things to give teeth to its other orders. In this case, there was an actual search warrant for the phone issued by this court. So the FBI says, look, this extra step is simply an order that will give effect and meaning to the search warrant, and we can compel uh, Apple to assist us in the execution of that search warrant. Uh, you know, on the side of the privacy concerns, I mean, if someone says, well, why doesn't Apple just help unlock this one phone? But the concern is wider than that about having a master key. Once the software is created, who's to say that this new technology won't be used over and over again on other phones? That's the concern, right, on the privacy side of it. And this is why I find myself in the unique position of agreeing with Edward Snowden on this point. <laughs> uh, once the genie is out of the bottle, you can't get the genie back exactly. in the bottle. And so once, say, for example, China and other jurisdictions that have wanted this type of uh, technology to exist, once they know that Apple can do it, if they're forced to create it, they can insist, you know, we're not going to let you import anything into our country unless it has this technology built into it. So that's why it's bigger than this one particular criminal investigation. And I can just want to point out one thing. This is not a unique situation. This has been tried in recent years by the FBI in various lower courts uh, with mixed results. Some courts grant the motions and some courts say no. They say no, this is really a bridge too far. We cannot order this company to create something that doesn't actually exist. And, and that, that's, that to me is the fascinating thing and, and you mentioned it. The, the technology, if Apple said oh, all right we'll do as we say, the technology does not exist they say. We don't have that code to do what you ask to do. So you're basically asking them to then, a private company, to then develop software out of nothing to then do what they're being told to do. What sort of precedent does that create? Because they're actually forcing the company to make something, yeah. not hand it over. Mm -hmm. It's a slippery slope. You know, our laws in general, going back to, say, the 13th Amendment that outlaws slavery, slavery, certainly this is not the same situation, but our law doesn't really like uh, involuntary servitude or the conscription of somebody's services. So they're effectively asking Apple uh, and its engineers to, against their will, become agents of the FBI to assist them in their law enforcement duties. Uh, it really, really is a public policy clash. You know, everybody wants uh, the terrorists to be defeated. Everybody wants the FBI to be able to have the tools to do its job. But at the same time, none of us want to be forced by a court to do something, especially if you're a business like Apple, that, you know, damages your brand. They have gone out of their way to make sure that not even Apple can have access to what's in our iPhones. Yeah.